Some social media and giant platforms have, are, are accused of censoring conservatives, but that's not stopping a former Facebook insider now pushing to take it one step further and start pulling some plugs. We have to turn down the capability of these conservative influencers to reach these huge audiences. They are extremely radical and pushing extremely uh, radical views. And so it's up to the Facebooks and YouTubes in particular to think about whether or not they want to be effectively cable networks for disinformation. All right, here with reaction, the Federalist publisher, Ben Dominich. Ben, good morning to you. Good to be with you. You are a conservative influencer. You need to have your plug pulled. <laughs> Well, look, I, I think it's interesting that they're kind of saying the soft part loud now uh, about things that they've been keeping, opinions they've been keeping to themselves for a while. And as a tryout for, you know, AOC's Ministry of Truth, uh, I think that that was a pretty good performance. Uh, but in this, in, in this instance, I think that we have to see here what's really going on, which is that big tech wants to broaden this crackdown in a lot of different ways and bring a lot of different corporations along with them. Uh, they are going to collude together going forward to crush conservative speech everywhere that it rises up, and they're going to use arguments for that that sound uh, along the lines of, of arguments you might have heard in the past about shutting down ISIS and the like, which right. is a comparison that this same guest made. Uh, those are the kinds of radical comments that are the opposite of any kind of unity message, any kind of coming together. Sure. Instead, it just seeks to crush the speech of people that you disagree with, which has never been the American way. Uh, you mentioned corporations. Uh, you know, we have heard over the last week there are a number of uh, Fortune 500 corporations that want to stop donating money to members of Congress who, on January 6th, uh, did not vote to certify the election. And now we're hearing that apparently there are some Democrat members of Congress who say those 130 or 140 members of Congress, all Republicans, who would not do that, need to be punished because they ultimately are responsible for what happened uh, on that day in part. Well, obviously, that wasn't their attitude when you had Democrats on the other side of this voting against certification in 2001, in 2005, and after 2000, uh, the election in 2016, of course. Uh, and, but this is also a situation, I think, where this is uh, all a part of their agenda to play up the Republican Party as being too radical to even do business with. Uh, frankly, from my perspective, I'm glad to see some of that corporate money go away because it's going to be replaced by small-dollar online donations, the kind of support that we saw the president garnered during his entire career. And that's something that I actually think is good for the GOP. They should be listening more to their voters and less toward the various corporations that, frankly, hate those same voters. They want to be able to sell their products to them, but also look down on them. And as I said, to crush their conservative speech whenever it rises up and becomes something that they view as problematic for their bottom line. Sure. Of course, on Wednesday at noon, Joe Biden becomes the president of the United States, our 46th. Uh, and a brand new Pew poll finds that 59% of Republicans, a majority, want Republicans to stand up to Joe Biden when it comes to his legislation in the House and the Senate. Does that sound about right to you? I think that number probably is going to move even higher as we actually see what the Biden agenda looks like. So much of this uh, pandemic conversation pushed to the sides all the different areas of policy that we'd like to know about a candidate. And I think that, frankly, people are going to be surprised by how much the Joe Biden that they see right now in 2021 is different than the one that they saw back in, say, 2009. As the, the Democratic Party has moved left, so has Joe Biden. And I think the Biden-Harris administration is going to push a lot of radical things that, frankly, are going to serve to reunify any kind of Republican infighting or, right. or uh, civil war over the various things that have happened, as we've seen in the past couple of weeks. When you see that agenda, I think you'll see that number only continue to grow. Exit question, because it's 50-50 in the Senate now with uh, Republicans and Democrats and people who caucus with the Democrats as well. How much of Joe Biden's agenda does he actually get Past. Ultimately, you need 60 for that mm. filibuster thing and that crazy rule they've got there. Uh, so will it be a slam dunk, all of his stuff, or will uh, the Republicans be able to somehow moderate what he's able to get done? 
uh, the answer is anything that involves spending money is going to be a slam dunk. Washington loves to spend money, yeah. and you'll be able to find the votes time and again to do that. It's going to be more, I think, on the cultural side of things that you're going to see the Biden administration have to do things through their administrative processes, the bureaucracy and the like, because there is going to be a number of members who come from more red, more purple states uh, who aren't necessarily going to go along with those aspects of the agenda uh, that touch on those cultural war issues and I think particularly on, on energy issues and the like. Stay tuned. It all starts at noon on Wednesday. Ben, thank you very much for joining us live. Great to be with you.